Ordric Vitalis, Latin, Ordricus Vitalis, 1075, c. 1142, was an English chronicler and Benedictine monk who wrote one of the great contemporary chronicles of 11th and 12th century Normandy and Anglo-Norman England. The modern biographer of Henry I of England, c. Warren Hollister called him an honest and trustworthy guide to the history of his times. Background, Ordric was born on 16 February 1075 in Adjum, Shropshire, England, the eldest son of a French priest, Odlerius of Orleans, who had entered the service of Roger de Montgomery, 1st Earl of Shrewsbury, and had received from his patron a chapel there. Ordric was one of few monks whom were of mixed parentage as his mother was of English heritage. When Ordric was five, his parents sent him to an English monk, Seward by name, who kept a school in the Abbey of S.S. Peter and Paul at Shrewsbury. At the age of eleven Ordric was entrusted as an oblate to the Abbey of St. Everlyn the Duchy of Normandy, which Montgomery had formerly despoiled but, in his later years, was loading with gifts. The parents paid thirty marks for their son's admission, he expresses the conviction that they imposed this exile upon him from an earnest desire for his welfare. Adler's respect for the monastic life is attested to by his own entry, a few years later, into a monastery which the Earl had founded at his persuasion. Ordric, on the other hand, felt for some time, as he avers, like Joseph in a strange land. He did not know a word of French when he reached Normandy. His book, though written many years later, shows that he never lost his English cast of mind or his attachment to the country of his birth. Monastic life, when Ordric reached the legal age for profession as a monk, his monastic superiors gave him the religious name of Vitalis, after a member of the legendary Theban Legion of Christian Martyrs because they found a difficulty in pronouncing his unusual baptismal name. In the title of his great chronicle, he prefixes the old to the new name and proudly adds the epithet Anglogena, English-born. Ordric's cloistered life was uneventful. He became a deacon in 1093, and a priest in 1107. He left his cloister on several occasions, speaking of having visited Croyland, Worcester, Cambrai, 1105, and Cluny Abbey, 1132. He turned his attention at an early date to literature, and for many years appears to have spent his summers in the scriptorium. Ordric's first literary efforts were a continuation of William of Jumege's Jest in Normanorum Jucum, a broad history of the Normans and their dukes from the founding of Normandy which order carried forward into the early 12th century. At some time between 1110 and 1115, Ordric's superiors ordered him to write the history of St. Teverell. The work, the Historia Ecclesiastica, ecclesiastical history, grew under his hands until it became a general history of his own age. St. Everell was a house of wealth and distinction. War-worn knights chose it as a resting place for their last years. It was constantly entertaining visitors from southern Italy, where it had established new foundations, and from England, where it had extensive possessions. Thus Ordric, though he witnessed no great events, was well informed about them. In spite of a cumbrous and affected style, he is a vivid narrator, his character sketches are admirable as summaries of current estimates. His narrative is badly arranged and full of unexpected digressions, but he relays much invaluable information not provided by more methodical chroniclers. He throws a flood of light upon the manners and ideas of his own age, and sometimes comments with surprising shrewdness upon the broader aspects and tendencies of history. His narrative breaks off in the middle of 1141 though he added some finishing touches in 1142. He reports that he was then old and infirm, probably he did not long survive the completion of his great work. The Historia Ecclesiastica, 
The Historia Ecclesiastica, described as the greatest English social history of the Middle Ages, falls into three sections, one book I and two, which are historically valueless, give the history of Christianity from the birth of Christ. After 855 this becomes a bare catalog of popes, ending with the name of Innocent I. These books Sordrick added in 1136 to 1141 as an afterthought to the original scheme. Two books three through vi form a history of St. Teverell, the original nucleus of the work. Planned before 1122, they were mainly composed in the years 1123 to 1131. The fourth and fifth books contain long digression on the deeds of William the Conqueror in Normandy and England. Before 1067 these are of little value, being chiefly derived from two extant sources, William of Jumeges gesta Normanorum Jucum and William of Poitiers gesta Gilomi. For the years 1067 to 1071 Ordric follows the lost portion of the gesta Gilomi and is therefore of the first importance. From 1071 he begins to be an independent authority. Notices of political events in this part of his work are far less copious than in the later books. Three books 7 through 13 relegate ecclesiastical affairs to the background. In this section, after sketching the history of France under the Carolingian and early Capet dynasties, Ordric takes up the events of his own times, starting from about 1082. He has much to say concerning the Empire, the Papacy, the Normans in Sicily and Apuia, the First Crusade, for which he follows Fulcher of Chartres and Baudry of Bourguel. But his chief interest is in the histories of the three brothers Robert Curtos, Duke of Normandy, William Rufus and Henry I of England. He continues his work, in the form of annals, up to the defeat and capture of Stephen of England at Lincoln in 1141. The historian Marjorie Chignall states that Ordric used now lost pancarts, cartularies or collections of charters, of various Norman monastic houses as sources for his historical writings. <laughs>